Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and welcome to the subscriber drawing request series, the first installment. Now, this is the image that was sent to me originally, and the person was requesting that I basically draw a demonic version, a bloodthirsty version of that. Basically, a man pug dog. Uh, that's demonic and bloodthirsty, and so that's basically what I'm after. <laughs> and uh, basically, I had to think, well, what is bloodthirsty and what is demonic? So, you think about, bloodthirsty doesn't necessarily mean that you're basically eating flesh or anything like that, just that you have a... Uh, some sort of thirst towards killing people, I guess, or killing something, which is kind of horrible. Um, actually, totally horrible. And s demonic. Demonic is something that I want to be careful with, because with my t-shirt design that I made fairly recently, I didn't really want to make a super accurate uh, pentagram or anything like that. So, you know, I, I did things as tastefully as I could to make it so that, uh, I guess it's implied uh, demonicness is there. So basically, you just saw me get a whole bunch of reference images, and I'm, I go ahead and draw a bunch of images of some pug dogs. And most, pretty much all of these I wind up deleting later on. This is just me warming up, me trying to understand how to draw a pug dog, which is awesome because... Uh, Pugs are the ugliest dog in the world, in the sense that they are so ugly, they're freaking adorable, like, just super cute. Uh, I love these sorts of dogs, and I've always kind of wanted to draw them, and I don't really have much experience drawing animals, actually, so and that's what it, what it is, basically. So, in this video, I, I'm actually going to cover a little bit on how you can improve on your artwork, especially if you're new or you're starting out kind of late and you just want to get better and such. Now, if you're drawing digitally, this is what you want to do. You want to start out with a, a thumbnail sketch. If you're drawing on pencil and paper, uh, what you want... Uh, okay, it's first, a thumbnail sketch is a very, very small version of your drawing. You draw a little square and you draw the entire picture really small on that because it takes a lot less processing power you're able to get it done really quick and uh, such like that so uh and you keep seeing the gorilla from the uh what is it uh, from roger rabbit on the screen really briefly here and there which i drew inspiration now as you can see from just the thumbnail alone you can see that I've taken creative liberties with this character. I really like the idea of a giant body and a little head. Now, the main problem that I had with the first thumbnail was that it I couldn't figure out a story to tell. The second thumbnail kind of hit the mark a little bit better, but it had very little foreshortening. And in order to have a really appealing drawing, you need foreshortening. A lot of it. The more, the better. And Genuinely and truly. So... If if you're if you if you're drawing with pencil and paper, okay, you're not able to necessarily draw a thumbnail. I mean, you can, but it's not going to be as useful as it is with uh, digital painting because you could just transform that and blow the image up really big and such like that. Now this thumbnail, the third thumbnail you see me drawing right here, this is the one that I settled with because it had the most. Uh, for shortening and it basically it's the exact same pose as the second thumbnail just with the camera at a different place so with pencil and paper while you're drawing just you know draw a rag doll look look at how I drew these characters in the thumbnail draw a rag doll because when you're trying to draw your uh, character really really like just bit by bit just you know you finish the head you finish the shoulders you finish all these different parts what happens is you can draw a character and only have some of his body on the page and you you reach the edge of the page and you're like well dang it i wanted the entire character on this picture draw the rag doll draw the rag doll that will make it so that you prevent yourself from doing that and it's really simple to draw a rag doll, 
okay? Or you can draw a stick figure, but stick figures tend to be really stiff, okay? Uh, but anyways, you get the point. The problem with, with a stick figure also is there's no cues to let you know if the character is foreshortened. And you can see there are cues here and there. I draw a circle or a series of circles to indicate, yeah, there's a lot of foreshortening here, a lot less in this other area, things like that. So that really helps. So yeah, a ragdoll goes a really long ways and sometimes, you know, it helps you come up with a, an original character. But, you know, if, if you're just starting out, if you're just starting out, try to learn the anatomy first. Um, like, learn anatomy. Uh, learn the names of the major muscles, uh, where they are, how they attach, how they look different from different camera angles, how they look different from different poses. For example, there's different flexible, flexible parts of the body, like the torso. Like the torso can kind of twist a little bit. Uh, the the forearm has the radius and ulna. Okay, the the radius goes around the ulna on the forearm, and that causes the muscles to twist a little bit, uh, depending on the pose and such. And these are things that, like the the forearm, is something that's really hard to get down, especially for a newbie. And when a character is twisting to kind of look behind them or something like that, it's really hard to get the abs to kind of wrap around to, to look right uh, if, if you don't know what you're doing. So just if you're just starting out, focus. Don't, don't focus on cartoon characters. Don't focus on being super stylized. Like, it, try to draw the anatomy properly try to draw a character properly measured. And once you have that mastered, you can go ahead and break all the rules and make a character that has all these different obnoxious um, characteristics to them and uh, the wrong measurements and all that. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the thing is is when you're drawing also, this is something that that I experienced a lot in this image. <clears throat> If when you're drawing, it's easy, it's just like step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. You know, that's good, okay? That that tells you you're in familiar territory. However, you're not learning anything. If you're not learning anything, why are you going to, like, and, and, and you're not doing it commercially or anything, why are you drawing the picture? Like, if it, like, my perception is, if the drawing feels like a puzzle, then you're learning something. And that's what this picture has been. Like, you saw me draw out the sketch. You saw me blow up the sketch. You saw me um, basically apply a white uh, color all down on the character. Then I inverted it and then lowered the opacity on it. And then I started redrawing all of the lines that I needed for his suit. And I drew them in white so that it, it, it looked better and such like that. So, so, so that the lines could actually show through a black suit. And notice how the cufflinks are, are doggy bones. <laughs> Anyways, I, I tried to put in a, a lot of personality here and such like that. Now, I... I am anticipating uh, a specific comment that someone's going to make. Oh, actually, let me to cover this. The, this hand was extremely difficult, so I took a picture of my hand and then emailed it to myself. And then I started drawing from the hand. And I, there's so much with a photograph that is very difficult to understand. There's, sometimes there's just too much, uh, like lighting and texture and other things obstructing your view in the background. So sometimes if you don't understand what the photograph is telling you, trace the photograph. This is when it's okay to trace. Trace the photograph and then draw from what you traced. I'm not joking. That is the easiest way to understand uh, what you're drawing. And that's the fastest way to do it. And that is the fastest way to level up your drawing skills. I'm not joking. Like, if you do that, you will improve a lot. Now, I forgot what, uh, what train of thought I was making earlier, what I was saying earlier. 
dang it that's unfortunate but here this foot was was kind of bothering me and i kept having to adjust it and change it a little bit but most especially the other foot the primary foot that i'm mean, the primary primary problem that i had with this other foot the one that's not even drawn at this point is that it's not foreshortened and i didn't want it to be airborne or anything like that um and it, and yet it looked like it was airborne i played around with the positioning of the leg a little bit and it still didn't work and i'm thinking well what can i do here what can i do so i draw i draw out a, another version of the foot right here and it looks good but the problem is is it doesn't have any foreshortening now if you're if you're like eight years old or something like that i can understand how foreshortening is something that you want to avoid because at that point if you're eight years old what you should be getting down is the anatomy and how to properly measure your character out using the head as a measuring system when you're drawing human beings and animals okay so uh, it's only until afterwards like uh, after you get that down and you feel like okay i understand anatomy and all that i know the names of the 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 primary names of the muscles the main muscles around the body i know their names and all that um at that point start venturing off start using different techniques and such so yeah man that hand started to look really good <laughs> i i'm i'm really happy with that hand <laughs> So yeah, um, at that point, start narrowing down your skills. Try to understand what foreshortening is and, and all that good stuff. Now, I decided he's, he's squishing another, basically a human being that's really tiny. And the reason why I decided on that is he's bloodthirsty, okay? And I, did, I didn't know how to take that, really. And demonic okay i'll put him in some sort of gothic cathedral and i'm not going to put a pentagram down or something uh red eyes that glow now i haven't put in the glowy eyes yet in fact unfortunately you know i spent a lot of time uh working on this image throughout the weekend uh, not the weekend the week a lot of time like uh, for two days i spent uh 100 percent of my free time on this image and i really wanted to get it finished but it just didn't work out now i tried to put the glow in the eyes and such and it worked on one of the eyes kind of but the other eye it didn't work out very well and some of it's because of, of the white shirt so i lowered the saturation of the shirt and it, that still didn't do anything i did a few other little approaches to see what i could do to improve it 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 didn't work uh, th this looks cool this black thing that i got going on there and i thought i could use some blending modes there but then i turned on the the picture and it just looks terrible so i got rid of that now here's a way how to find um a, perpend a perfectly perpendicular line so i have the horizon line and what i do is i use the assistant tool uh, I guess I don't do it quite yet. Dang it. Um, I thought I did. No, I did. It just happened so quickly. I'll have to cover that later. If, if you guys have taken geometry, you guys understand it already. Um, it, it's just simple. You get two rather large circles on the same line, centered on the line. And you get them to intersect and where the where the two circles intersect at the top and bottom you draw a line through there and then you have a perfectly perpendicular line now I had a lot of difficulty with this background and I, I realized not quite too late but I realized pretty late in the game that one way to do it to, to make sense of the background is to consistently like just create a silhouette of your background as you're making it on a different layer now if you're working on pencil and paper i, I don't know what to tell you honestly I, I i struggle with drawing backgrounds on pencil and paper not having variously different layers and such like that it, it's a pain in the butt and i i don't know how, the the most thing the most that i can really say is 
I finish like a few things here and there and then I ink them and then I finish a few other little things and then I ink them. Uh, I, I do things incrementally at that point so that my pencil lines don't contradict finished work, if that makes sense. And then I, I run the risk of erasing finished work. Because um, it's really easy to come up with all these thousands and thousands of guidelines on your picture and the picture just doesn't even make sense. And even afterwards, even while it's in, in the sketch phase, it can make very little sense. In fact, I kind of doubt that you guys can even make sense of what's on the screen right now. It's a series of pillars that turn into archways. Now, while I wound up drawing the uh, stained glass, uh, here I am zoomed in on the image, and it's kind of difficult for me to think, okay, so on what side of what line is the pillar and on what side of the line is not a pillar. <laughs> so I struggled with that. Now, if you notice, I put the picture at a very strong Dutch angle. And I, I, I've always wanted to, d to draw pictures on a Dutch angle and all that. Oh, right, right. Actually, I remember that thing that I said that I forgot about. Um... Now, I, I can anticipate uh, a particular comment. Now, I showed you guys the original image that the person just said, I, could you draw my character, and then specified the details, uh, demonic, bloodthirsty, and all that. And really, okay, so some people may say, well, that it, your picture looks nothing like that. I mean, you, you drew a completely different character. I mean, yeah, it's a man pug dog that's bloodthirsty and demonic i mean you fit those but it doesn't look like the character i i want to draw what i want to draw <laughs> like uh there were some specifications i'm following them and if you know if i was doing this to get paid then yeah you know what uh at that point i would uh do it exactly the way that the client wants but this this isn't artist-client relationship here. This is me drawing something that's inspired by an idea. Now here you see me applying these uh, gradients, but it's better it's better to have your lighting lined out before you go about trying to create gradients. And um, eventually I got rid of this, but for the time being it actually worked really well. I put it down, put those down so that I could actually. Uh, use the the gradients as a reference to let me know what side of what line is the pillar and this allowed me to be able to draw out this these stained glass now even though this is a gothic cathedral i mean i have this demonic looking man pug dog uh killing someone inside of a gothic cathedral and you know the only religion that I know of that actually uses uh, stained glass is Catholicism. And I don't want to offend people from the world's largest religion on earth that's Christian based. Like, uh, that doesn't interest me. So the stained glass doesn't, doesn't have any religious connotation to it or anything like that. So I'm hoping that can you know keep people happy and all that like uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that that people can actually see that um i i'm willing to draw things that are interesting but i i just don't have any interest in offending people now the uh the gothic arches just kind of finishing that off um the video is kind of coming to an end at this point and you guys can actually see how far i got uh next week i'm hoping to have this image finished and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with where this thing is going and, and how it's coming out. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that I can, I can get the color down. Um, it's kind of, uh, things are up in the air with the color for me. Like, like I said, drawing should be, it should feel like a puzzle, like a very difficult puzzle. Otherwise, you're just not you're not doing anything that you're you're not learning anything and so with this be feeling like a puzzle especially how am i going to color it um that's a good thing 
Now, you'll see me experiment with one thing and then, you know, delete it and then experiment with something and delete it and, and sometimes do the same thing three or four times trying to see if I can try different things with that approach. This is good. This is normal. I mean, if you need to learn, you need to give yourself a license to learn. Uh, you can't expect to do things right the first time every time. And this is the perfect time for me to kind of get these sorts of hiccups out of my system so that I can I can learn well enough to 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 make it so that I don't I don't wind up repeating the same mistake over and over again like how uh, I do sometimes inside of this video. So yeah. Anyways, the uh, the final image uh, of as of right now is going to appear on the screen right now. All right. So there it is. Now I'm thinking about maybe putting a motion blur on his arms to make it look like you know there's motion. His head. His arm is coming down and squish and all that. Um, and yeah, the background, with the background, I didn't do much measurement, probably less than I should have. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm experimenting. What can I get away with? What can I not get away with? So, there's that. Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you didn't like it, please like, share, and subscribe. Anyways, there's a lot of work that goes into these videos. And... If you guys would like to take a look at any of my other videos, feel free to click on any of them that are appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.